Do you want to check out IT Pro TV but aren't ready to commit? We're making a few episodes from our most popular courses free for you to try here on YouTube so you can see what they're all about. Enjoy this episode and head over to itpro.tv when you're ready to see the full course. Hello and welcome to IT Pro TV. This is CEH. I'm here with Daniel Lowry. Hey, how's it going today, Kathy? It's going great. How are you? Yeah, that's, that's what's really important. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Daniel, what are we going to be chatting about today? Today we're going to be talking about uh, the motives, the goals, the objectives behind why attackers attack. Why, why are they doing this? What possesses them so to make them want to actually perform these horrible attacks against society and the different network systems that are out there? It's a, a really. It seems like a a really important conversation to have, which is why we're going to have it. But it's also kind of a vocabulary. Uh, dump. So we're going to learn some terms and definitions throughout this. Just want to be kind of straight up with you on that. I know that can be a bit of a slog, but like I said, just because it's a vocabulary dump doesn't mean there aren't very important pieces of vocabulary in here for our concepts later in the series. So this is going to be good stuff today. It's going to be great. It, this topic's really fascinating to me because I've always wanted to know why hackers <laughs> do what they do. You know, we and gotta, you're here with the answers. Yeah, we got to get into the psyche of these people, yes. right? We're like yeah. FBI profilers. Yeah, it's like every movie I love to watch. Yeah. Coming right? to life right yes, here in the studio. Yes. We're going to have some fun. All right, so let's begin. What motivates a person to commit a cyber attack? What are some well, of the reasons? Well, some of the reasons. Let's start off with probably one of the more uh, mundane and yet uh, innocuous reasons, which is the idea of curiosity, right? They, they just have that thing in their brain that says, I wonder if I, if I pull on this thread, will it, what could it possibly be? And then they, they've, they reach to a point to where if I keep pulling, I'm probably crossing a legal boundary, but I don't, it's a victimist crime. I'm not going to do anything bad. I just want to know whether or not I could. So there's a lot of, uh, we'll, well, I guess we'll call them attackers out there that will cross those legal boundaries out of sheer curiosity of wondering whether or not they could accomplish the goal. Could I do this? Have I found what I think I found? And that nagging voice in the back of their head just won't let them let it go. So they they do it. They find a way and they get in. They feel good about themselves. I was say, but kind of powerful, right? Yeah. Well, you know, it's little... it's like a puzzle. You ever, you ever get like a really tough puzzle and you solve it and you feel, like you said, yeah. you feel powerful. You feel really good about yourself. So it's that kind of dopamine hit they get, get a little addicted to that. A lot of these people have have actually um, uh, segued that curiosity into a lucrative career as a security researcher, right? So there's a lot of companies now that will say, hey, if you find a problem with our system, let us know. We'll give you some swag. We might even give you some money. So that, it's, it's cool that that has become a culture and not even, uh, more than that, even a, a profession but there's still those out there. They don't care about that. That's nice that it's there. Maybe they make some money, but I just want to know, can I? And that's that curiosity. Yeah. What else do we have? Well, uh, some people kind of along the same vein is they want to brag about it, right? They want to <laughs> say, look what I did. And they get bragging rights. Not only look what I did, but look who I did it to, right? That's really where the bragging rights comes into play. This is from an idea of like bravado, right? Like I've got this arrogant self-assuredness that's kind of annoying to probably most people, <laughs> right? And they want to say, look at me. Look how awesome I am. I'm so awesome. I've hacked X, Y, or Z. We see these in yeah. article. Have you ever watched um, maybe like an interview with an attacker that's gone straight or whatever is maybe in jail? And why did you do this? Oh, because I could. It's a great way to get caught. Yeah. You're bragging on yourself. Yeah, I can't you know, help it. I gotta the, tell somebody. I love the people that post pictures on like social media. Here's me hacking into the NSA. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's not smart. You understand they're coming for you, right? So, but that's a that's if another. If they were smart, good. they wouldn't. They wouldn't. I mean, they are smart in one sense, oh, yeah, right? Because they true. were able to hack a complex system, but then they posted about it on the internet, and that's not a smart idea. Yeah. So. One of the most common things that we read about all the time is businesses, right? Oh yeah. Hackers attacking businesses. Yeah, they go after businesses for varied uh, reasons, but disruption of business is definitely one of those key reasons and motivations and goals behind an, why an attacker might attack. And when, what do we mean when we say disruption of business? Let's, let's define that. Where if you provide a service or a product, 
for some reason, if I'm able to disrupt the production of your product or the, um, the ability to have uh, the service available to your clients or your customers, they can't get to it. I've disrupted your business. And through that, you're going to feel some pains. I might not cause you any direct monetary uh, problems. So I didn't steal money from you, but I might cause you to lose customers. And that does affect your financial uh, business. Also, your reputation of your business. You might think, oh, well, you know, yeah, this person over here was just a jerk and found a way to, to hurt our site or our product or whatever. And uh, what? And everybody's just going to go back to business as normal as soon as we fix the problem. But your reputation might be damaged. Mm -hmm. And people might think, well, if you can't keep those people from doing this and I've got to go through a disruption of service or now I've got an inferior quality product and I've got to return it because the, they messed with the manufacturing or whatever the case is, I'm just going to go with your competitor because they haven't had those problems. So that you can see what well, disruption of business, this comes along with a lot with like industrial espionage kind of stuff. This uh, different corporate entities fighting with each other, trying to be the top dog, trying to have that competitive edge. So they'll hire hackers to come in and disrupt the wow. competition's business so that they can stay competitive, uh, competitive or uh, take the edge and the advantage. That's a great explanation. I was actually thinking about disgruntled employees. Oh, you yeah. know, they leave and then they're like, screw you. Yeah, yeah. We are going to talk about disgruntled yeah. employees. Uh, that can happen. Yeah. And that could be their whole purpose. Mm -hmm. If that is that type of attacker, we're going to talk about attacker types and attack types as well. Uh, but definitely can be a, a motivation. I'm, I'm upset. And uh, we'll actually get to that. Okay. Know, just a second, but let's uh, let's move on. I'm going to talk a little bit. We were kind of discussing this before the show. Hacktivism. Yeah, it's Hacktivism. a thing, guys. It's a real thing. It's a thing. And uh, this is the idea. We all hopefully know what an activist is, right? You have a cause. You're championing, 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 championing. I think. I think that's it. That cause. You also happen to have a very particular set of computer skills that allow you to champion that cause in a digital way. So you go after your perceived enemy's website, their infrastructure, right? Use those hacking skills against that. So defacement of websites are very common with this. I I'm, I'm disagree with you on X, Y, or Z topic, and I'm, a, I'm an activist against that, so I'm going to hack your site. I'm going to put up a bunch of stuff defacing your site about how horrible you are and probably some uh, non-tasteful um, or, or distasteful images and things of that nature and uh, wordage and, and things of that. So that's what you see with uh, hacktivism a lot. I remember the uh, hacking group Anonymous was very famous for this. They went after the Church of Scientology. They were kind of a, a hacktivist in that sense where they were denial of service attacking that, um, that entity and actually did do that for mm -hmm. some time. They, and they still do. I haven't heard a lot from them lately. They've kind of right. died down, but there was a time where they were probably the most well-known hacktivists out there. Now, is this along the same lines as political reasons? Because when you're saying that, I'm thinking political. You know, it's it's a, definitely uh, some blurring probably okay. between the two, but still an, enough distinction that we call them out separately. Whereas a political, you know, you got the hacktivist, I'm going after you, I don't like your message or your procedure or whatever it is. Whereas a political uh, motive will probably be you're on the opposite party. Think more along the lines of that disruption of business. Right. I'm trying to keep the competitive edge, whereas in politics, I'm trying to keep the political edge. I'm going to look, I'm going to try to hack your phone, find probably things you don't want me to find and then threaten to expose you if you don't drop out of a race or you're already there. So now I'm just going to expose you and now you're going to be defrocked or whatever it is. Uh, I guess I don't know the political term for <laughs> removal of office. Right. Because of some sort of scandalous or salacious thing that I've discovered or I make fake documents. I do disinformation campaigns. It's all for political gain for my side of the political fence. Not everybody does this, but it probably has done a lot more than you would expect uh, because we see it a lot in the news. You just got to watch the news and you'll see a lot of this being done more and more every day. So political reasons can definitely be a great motivator for hacking. For hacking. Right. Also in the news, <laughs> uh, political and religious reasons, right? They say they don't mix, but when it comes to this line of work. Yeah. You're not supposed to talk does. about these things, right? You're not supposed to, but we're, we're going to. We're saying the quiet parts out loud right now, right? <laughs> so yeah, again, it's just 
what's your your reason du jour, right? Right. If you are more religiously maybe um, zealous in some way, shape, or form, that could be a prime uh, motivator for a lot of people. They start to forget maybe it's. Um, that we have laws that you're not supposed to do these things and it doesn't matter. My religion is, or at least the way I perceive it, is forcing me to think that this is a good way to fight for the advancement of that religion. Again, going back to the same idea, you're on the opposite side of things. So I want to propagate my religion and, and suppress yours in some way. So I'm going to actively attack my, poli my, my, politic my religious rivals using my hacking skills. Yeah, and on a more serious note, terrorism is also a big part of this. Yeah, this is a, this is a real problem. It's something we've got to be on the lookout for. Uh, you know, we were talking about the, uh, as of the filming of this episode, the oil pipeline, or not, uh, the gas pipeline, I'm sorry, the gas pipeline here in the United States that was uh, shut down because there was an attack against the entity that runs it. Um, that was not a terrorist attack, though. That was just a... It was just a crime. Right. And when you right. first hear it, that's where your mind goes. But that's where <laughs> your mind goes right. because it's against critical infrastructure. Sure. Terrorism typically will probably be against some sort of critical infrastructure, something that will cause damage to human life. We are now crossing the boundaries from, you know, reputationally damaging you or, you know, system damage into actual human casualties and fallout. That is the idea behind terrorism. So I want to attack an airliner drop their systems, make planes fall out of the sky. That's the kind of stuff. I want to attack a power grid so that massive damage occurs and people, because emergency services can't work and things of that nature, people will be injured and die, right? So this is all about going after the human aspect, trying to cause as much fallout as possible to push X, Y, or Z agenda. Yeah, very distinct difference there. Very much so. And sometimes hackers do this just because they're pissed off. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? You know, this kind of goes back to what you were talking about <laughs> earlier, right? Like, I'm a disgruntled yeah. employee. Yeah, I'm you mad. have treated me <laughs> badly, and I will exact cold, hard this is what revenge. I can do. That's right. Revenge is oh, a. That's a good title for a movie, too. It is. It was a TV show, if you oh, haven't watched okay. it. It I was a. Yeah, oh, man, my wife loved that <laughs> show. So, my gift to you. Oh, thank if you, you. If you like soap opera, primetime dramas of around people getting revenge against each other. Revenge is for you. But we're talking about actual <laughs> revenge. The, the, uh, the emotion, the feeling, and the activity of revenge against people. You have wronged me. I have got a slight of some type from you. And now I will exact justice in my own way, which could be, if I have the right set of skills, uh, hacking you, right? Again, insider threats. I work for a company. They treated me badly. I can, you know, grab all their customer data and sell it on Darknet or something like that, or give it to their competitor, even even worse, or take trade secrets and go to a competitor, that kind of stuff. If I'm political, then I'm going to cross the aisle, as it were, and tell all, spill the beans on all the secrets of what's going on, how they, what's their plans, right? Because they, they just, they never appreciated me, and now they will. Dang it! Because I'll show them. Yeah, I'm gonna disrupt their websites and I'm gonna put and things. I'll end up in jail. Know. I'm after you, buddy. <laughs> Obviously, this isn't very nice. <laughs> you know, it's frowned upon in polite societies. The idea of exacting revenge. Go through the proper legal channels for justice if some actual real injustice has been done. And sometimes, Daniel, it's all about the money. <laughs> well, so you know, that's funny. So I <laughs> asked, I asked uh, Kathy, I asked Megan, our producer here, uh, what one of these th topics did they think was the number one with a bullet. I didn't get it. I thought coming. curiosity is what Neither of them got this, yeah. right? Cold hard cash, right? Mm -hmm. The the main, motiva the oh, main, main motivator, the main motivator, good old fashioned cybercrime, right? Just the criminal aspect. It's a great way to make money. Going back to the gas pipeline that has recently been hacked, that company, uh, that company, the, the, uh, uh, the threat actors that attacked that actually made a statement like, oh, that's our bad. We didn't mean to disrupt your economy and, you know, people's lives and, you know, social, Sorry. economic things. I just wanted some money <laughs> just because it was a ransomware attack. Um, but that's what it boils down to. Just straight up theft. I want to steal and make money off of that theft. And that is the primary, at least in the, from what I've seen, my anecdotal evidence. And I think I've probably even read a few reports that have said statistically what people are after, what uh, threat actors or attackers are after. Hackers, they're after the money. 
They're going after the money. They're going to steal credit card information. They're going to st- sell personally identifiable information uh, from data breaches that they've gathered on the dark web. They are going to blackmail you. They are going to uh, ransomware, right? That's another great one. I'll locked up all your files. And if you would like them back, you can deposit the X amount of Bitcoin into this wallet for, for the low, low fee. price of $5 million, <laughs> you know, or whatever the case is. I think the average take is like something like $200,000. Oh, really? Right. So it's not like huge amounts of money, but it's, it's nothing to sneeze at. But if you at. do that to enough people. Right. You're, enough you're got a pretty good living going yeah. on, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's exactly what Living on an doing. island somewhere. Yeah, man. <laughs> private island. And then people come for you. But it's not a good thing to do. No, you should not no, do this. Crime is bad. I didn't know we you We are not that. promoting this. So, but yes, yeah, cybercrime, that that's what we're talking about. So just straight up stealing stuff, blackmail, uh, ransoms, that kind of thing. That's what we're going on here. All right. Awesome. So we've learned in this episode why hackers do what they do. Maybe it's curiosity. Maybe it's religion. Maybe they just want some more money. Whatever it is, there's a lot of reasons behind it. Yeah. Probably the money thing, though. Probably the money. That's what we've learned. If you've learned anything yeah, today, that's what money. it is. Follow yeah, the money. It. All right. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. We hope to see you again soon on CEH. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.